Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week we're down in Ocala, Florida to visit with Rick Schmidt and check out a few of the cars in the NPD collection. Now, Rick and his dad have some really interesting cars, and they specialize in low-mileage, unrestored originals. They also go after cars that people have overlooked or maybe forgotten, like the 73 Grand Torino Sport or the 71 T-Bird for sure. Now, some people may say, uh, and why? But my answer to that is, why not? Hey Rick, how you doing man? Doing great, good to see you Dennis. Always great to see you. Looks like we got a 70s theme going today. We do have a 70s theme <laughs> going today. You know I always say the early 70s, there they they were wild times near as I can remember. Uh, <laughs> you but, didn't wear your bell bottoms. <laughs> I should have, I should have worn the bell bottoms and love beads. Because um, that's the feel I get with these cars. You know, I mean, yeah. This is taking me back to a, a Starsky Hutch era. You know it's a muscly time. This is an era of cars that's been so overlooked and so uh, just forgotten about through the 80s and 90s which was when, really when my dad and I were heavily collecting these mm -hmm. because everybody else was looking the other way and we were like those are going to be yeah. neat who cares someday, about these? and let's get them while we can find them because so few people actually kept and cared for these types of cars that they're the rarest of the rare these cars are really stars when I take them out I get more attention in these types of cars than I do in my old GTO for instance sure, or a 57 you see Ford. Those, but when was the mm -hmm. last time you saw a, a a 70, uh, 73 Three. Torino, Grand Torino, Grand Torino Sport. Very right? few. Let's talk about this baby. This is, this again is a, uh, it is an unmolested, untouched. All original paint. All original it's car. never been a part, completely original and restored car. How many miles? It's got a little, just a touch over 40,000 original miles. It's a Q-Code Cobra Jet 351 four barrel, wow. which was the highest horsepower engine you could get in a Torino that year. They offered a 429. But to be blunt, the 429 was a dog. Really, eh? The, uh, it was the Q-Code 351 Cleveland Cobra Jet that made better power, and you could get it with a four-speed manual transmission, which this car also has Whoa, so with the 350 nicely, axle. Nicely, nicely So this is the best performing Torino that you could buy in 1973. And in that, it's black. Black was not a factory available color in 1973. Oh, really? I didn't know that. So the original the owner order? special ordered this car and paid $99 Whoa. for the special paint <laughs> option. And you can always tell a special paint car because it has the Argent bumper filler. When we were standing here, there's something I noticed about this car that I'd never noticed before. Mm -hmm. it was just how, you know, how much of a curve there is to this windshield. How, you know, most windshields are fairly flat. You'll get a little curve on the edge. But if you look at this, it's almost like a turret, the way mm -hmm. this trim strip comes around and yeah. the window wraps around and tapers down into the hood. It's a very radically styled car it when is. you really think about it and, it and it pulls up. It's a beautiful car going down the road. I've always been a fan of these 72 and 73 Torinos and 73 what differentiates it is it has the big five mile per hour mandated government bumper on it. But uh, you know cool interiors you know straight straight black. Yeah, about as all black, as black it gets. buckets and console you see the four speed there. It's got, shifter. it's got the rally gauges with uh, full instrumentation and tachometer. It's got the optional rim blow uh, deluxe steering wheel, oh, which like which doesn't mm -hmm. have a mark on it, is like brand new. So the the fellow must have not worn rings when he drove the car. Um, it's just absolutely brand new. Even the carpet has the original style inserts, which you can't, which are not reproduced. And it's it's also interesting how it 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 bulges out. Again, it narrows up at the roof. Mm -hmm. Gets really it, fat it's, there. It's in got the, the, the real quarter. Coke bottle thing going yeah, on with yeah. it. And, uh, and a very sleek fastback uh, style. It doesn't have very good uh, rear view vision, but from the, as the gumball rally, what's behind you doesn't matter. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, also really small tail lights mm -hmm. for such a big car. Yep. And the, this is unrestored. You, haven't, you guys have done nothing to this other than clean it up. Nothing but clean it up. There it is, 351 4V. Yep, that's the, uh, the, the last year for the Cobra Jet. It doesn't look uh, terribly <laughs> eye candy-ish to the untrained eye, but to, to your die-hard Ford fan, it's just a treasure trove of originality. It's still, we're still running on all of our color-coded original vacuum lines you can see in there, yeah. and, and all the little paint stripes and markings on, on everything is still the ones Hanging that came in there. from right. the factory that were put on in the right. factory. Nothing's been resprayed or refinished. It's a it's as original a '73 Torino as I've ever come across. Like I said, I've seen a couple restored, but I've never never come across another one that's that's still hanging in there like this one. Yeah, no, it's just everything. It's like it's it's 
it's like a, 1973. Yeah, it's a time capsule. Wow. Well, can we take it out? Absolutely. You'll enjoy driving this Yes, one. I think I will. <laughs> well, let's do it. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, you know, it sounds like a bigger engine than a 351, actually. Yeah, it does. It, it has a lot of bark. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it's got a fair amount of bite, too. <laughs> I like the sound of this car. It doesn't sound great, but at the same time, it's just buttery smooth. It's got that factory balance to it, you know? Yeah. These were really, they really were nice riding, nice driving cars. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you forget about it. Mm -hmm. But the four speed is, and, and it's nicely positioned too. I mean, you got mm -hmm. the armrest here and then your, your hand just drops right on it. And that still is, is the fun of driving a car is shifting. The car's got an amazingly light touch and steering though for such a, a big, you know, a big car. Yeah, it does. It does. It steers and it, it, it's an enjoyable car to drive, take on trips. It rides very soft, and, but not too soft. You know, there's been a lot of cars that we bought, uh, you know, 15 years ago, that at the time, dad, my dad and I were looking at us going, you know, which, Take a big swig of beer and go, okay. And now in retrospect, it's like, wow, what a steal that was. And, and, and laugh at how stressed out we were and rubbing our chins and, and negotiating and haggling, trying to get it down as tight as we could. And you're still in that search, basically, right? I mean, you guys are still looking for those those gems. Yes, we're trying to be pickier because we've got less and less space to put stuff. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Building some more, and then, and then oh, I, 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 I don't even want to think about what's going to happen after we've got that new expansion done. <laughs> Boy, a lot of room for cars. Room for cars, oh, man, let's go. Yeah. Well, this really does drive beautifully. <laughs> And the sound is awesome, and it's just, you, it's, it's, you really want to just punch it, you know? You're, <laughs> you really do. Well, I'm loving it. Welcome back to My Classic Car. That Torino is a strong running car like the Isn't it? Feet. <laughs> Yeah, it makes it. And she better. sounds good. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about a really wild one here. This is a 71 T-Bird. This is a crazy car this in every aspect. It's a completely styling, insane the car. Colors, the matching interior. It was one of those cars that was just so eccentric that I that, that I was drawn to it immediately. Now you you've named this car, right? Yes, this car's name is Huggy Bear, and I don't name cars. <laughs> I, 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 in fact, I've I've never been this a fan of that. This is the first one you've ever named, right? But we had it at a show, and I had a big group of friends was with me, and we were just sitting in our chairs, and the car was being mobbed. You wouldn't believe how much attention the car was getting. And they were all trying to name it, but they were all using these disco themes. No, man, it's before names. disco. This, this is, is way before <laughs> disco. So, I, was, so I, I came up and I said, you know, it looks like the type of car that Huggy Bear would have driven. <laughs> and as soon as it came it out of my me. mouth, that was the end of that. Everybody was like, yep, the car's name is Huggy Bear. So. Well, this is, I'm a Thunderbird guy. I've got several of them and I, I love these cars. But now it, in this era, this, this uh, body style started in 67. And at that point, Thunderbird got a thyroid condition. It got big. It was built on the Continental platform. They were right? building. They started building it on the Continental uh, Mark III platform, and uh, yeah, it was. It was. A, it's a chopped and channeled Lincoln. Right. Is what it is. Right. That's what it looks like. Right. But you know, in '67, when this body style was launched, it was a, a flat front end, big, long oval hideaway headlights. But then in, in '70, I think, but certainly in '71, it got. It grew this beak. I mean, this, and that's a very Pontiac-esque beak, almost. It's, it's Pontiac-esque, but also in the in the LTD and the full-size Ford line, they started introducing a smaller version of that beak. But this is another original car. It's not particularly low mileage, but this is an unrestored car too, right? It's totally unrestored, all original paint, all original trim, which is just am amazing. How many on miles? The car. It's got over seventy thousand miles wow. on it. Well, now also. Th th this color is pretty wild. It's kind of a, it's uh, called a butterscotch or something. Light yellow gold. Okay. And you could only get light yellow gold on in 1971 on a Thunderbird or Continental. Oh, so if you wanted to look this way, you, you had to spend have some, some money coin, if you right? wanted to look this good. So. <laughs> now, was this a special 
option package too? Because this thing's this is a very wild yes, car. Yes, you see it's got this alligator skin vinyl. Yeah, the roof. genuine simulated alligator uh, vinyl. And it's this car has the special brome package, which was an exterior and interior decor package. Yeah. Well let's talk about that interior. The interior <laughs> Man, is, this is, thing is what insane. makes the car. It's Absolutely. got a matching yellow and ginger uh, special brome interior with this hop sack cloth. That is that just... was big in the in the early seventies. Mm -hmm. Kind of a kind of. I actually I actually had a Hopsack sport coat. Did you? Then. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell many people that. But uh, but it was this this kind of rough, almost burlap mm -hmm. feel. Uh, and, and I don't know where you, you would go today to get yellow hop sack. I might still have the sport coat. I don't know. I could. But, it, but again, in these people's travels, they did not put a mark, did not pull a thread on the carpet. The interior is absolutely brand new in it. Yeah. And one of those things where you just can't even believe that the factory I know. did something that crazy. Well, and, and the wraparound, I mean, look at mm -hmm. the, the vinyl on the wraparound back seat. I mean, this thing, mm -hmm. this is so cool. One of the great looks of this car, I think, is, is the rear end here, because this is also still very similar to the the 67 when they first came out with this but that all lights up and it's the sequencing sequential yes, turn signals it's got right sequential turn boom, signals boom, 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 boom. it's a great this is my favorite angle of the car ever you know when i was a kid i always noticed these cars on the road and i always thought that that was just a dynamite look from the rear so so wide and low and sleek with that long tail light lens it was like unlike anything else that you they saw really around. are this would have had the what the 429 right the 429 they they all came with the 429 and it's, like, oh, it's a running car it's surprising with all the weight how, how this car really gets up and <laughs> pass goes. anything but a, but a gas station let's have <laughs> a look at that thunder jet all right You know, I don't think I would have found that hood release. <laughs> <laughs> Even I forget where the releases are on some of our cars. So. Well, so what we got here is another uh, unrestored, unrestored working engine, right? Kind of dingy, but absolute time, cap time capsule uh, engine compartment. And going to leave it that way. It's 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 got all the original decals and, and hoses and lines on it. And Man. It runs and drives beautiful. Well, we don't have time to take it to California, although I would <laughs> like to. But what do we say we at least... Cruise it around the neighborhood. Let's spin it around the neighborhood. All right. See if, Close we it can, up. see if we can find some squirrels. Let's go thundering. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Man, that's a lot of yellow out there in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you know, that the, the hood's kind of up there. You're kind of looking out over the hood, aren't you? On yeah, this it's, car? Got, it's got a good sized crown to it. Boy, this is a car that floats. Yeah. And these high back buckets are nice. They just, they hit you just right. Yeah, this car's real comfortable to sit in. You know, this car doesn't lean when you mm -hmm. corner, and, and, and my, that's what I always found about T-Birds. They corner so amazingly flat for these big, hulking monsters that they are. I've always loved this category of car. They're, they're impractical in some respects because again i mean they're you know not a huge passenger compartment and all mm -hmm. that but they're just they're so distinctive they're so sleek you know in, in in a large way but but still really sleek we've lost something somewhere in in that uh everybody is so bent on rear seat practicality that just everything has four doors now you know a, a, a big difference between this and the and the Gran Torino that we just got out of is, you know, that thing, you know, muscly stance, you know, the, the exhaust burble, you know, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. you can hardly hear this car. No, it's quiet, it's low, it's sleek, with the windows up, it's very tight, it doesn't have any, any wind noise, it's a really well built, it's, it's a Continental. It is a Continental in yeah. the feel, and it just, you know, there's no wander, it's, it, you can feel that she's heavy. Mm -hmm. And it just goes down the road straight right. as an arrow. Yeah, you just float along in this baby. Oh man, you talk about a 70s flashback. The only thing that's missing is Jefferson Airplane blaring through the 8-track. But I gotta tell you, the 73 Torino and the 71 T-Bird, I'm loving it. Rick, can you come up with something this cool next time? Absolutely. Remember your bell bottom. <laughs> I'll bring them. <laughs>